right then. So the first method I'm going to choose to use is the bung. Now the reason for that is the water in front of me is probably, I would say about five foot deep at the most. So if I was to fish lures or anything which requires a lot of casts back and forth over and over again, the water depth isn't going to sustain those fish for long. They're going to spook very quickly and that's it. That's me done here. So with the bung, the benefit of this right now here is that I can cast it out, leave it there and keep the flies in the water for as long as possible with as minimum amount of water disturbance as I can. That means the fish should stay there longer and it'll increase our chances. So what we'll do is now, I've got the cap bug on and I'm just going to work my way in these margins to my right. Just some short casts to begin with. With this bright sun it's going to be very hard but hopefully it'll work. The water in front of us is no more than probably about four or five foot deep. So I'm happy with the with the depth that the, the that the fly is sitting under the bung at, at the moment. But it might be that we're fishing the wrong fly or the completely wrong method. I'll persist for another three or four casts in that area. If we get nothing, I'll aim out toward this island here. And if we get nothing in five minutes, then something needs to change. Whether it be the fly on the end, the depth I'm fishing that fly at, or the method itself. Oh, there you go. There you go. Sorry, dip, and it went. That didn't take long, did it? And there you go. Not a big fish at all by any means, but welcome all the same. So we'll get the fly straight out. Wipe our hands. And there you go, one for the camera there, if you can see it. And we'll get him straight back. Oh, there he goes. Okay, so that's a good sign. Obviously that's worked what we did. So all we're doing right now is we're fishing a cat bug at about three and a half feet, I think. And I'm working my way around. It was a small fish, but it was a fish nonetheless within the first five minutes. So what I'm going to do is now, I'm going to stick with that fly for another couple of minutes. I'm going to continue working this side and see what happens. If that fly does, stops working, I don't get another bite. I'm confident the bung will still go. I just need to change the fly now. We're about eight to nine minutes into the session. So let's see if we can pull out another one. So that fish there then pretty, pretty confidently took the fly. It was one twitch, bang, straight in. So that what that's told me early on is that the bung should go today. And much of this is about trial and error. Rule out what doesn't work, rule out what does work. If for example, now we'd had 20 minutes on the bung and not one take with a variety of different flies into the bung, and that would have said, right, maybe the bung isn't going on this particular part of the lake and it might not go all day. We'd go down to a different part of the lake and try the same method and we might find that it works. Because what I'm looking for is, on any method, I'm looking for action quickly and consistently. One fish on a fly isn't enough um, of a sign, really, that that's the winning fly that day. What you're looking for is... Uh, for example, with this fly now on the bung, I'm, I'm hoping for and expecting regular indications from the fish that they like this fly. So if, for example, now we've had one fish in the net and a couple of knocks, then I'm saying, right, that fly is the right fly. I just need to fish better, I need to set the hook better and so on and so forth. Right now, we've only got one fish, so it, the jury is still out. Okay, off with the cat bug. And on with, let's try, let's try the, the coral leg. So it's the same approach now. I'm going to check five or six casts to my right, where I know there's moving fish. And I'm going to check five or six casts to my left and hope that there's something there as well. There's not, nothing moving on the left hand side at all, which makes me think that the fish to the right are resident fish that are willing to feed and have, have gone into a feeding pattern. 
anything on the left hand side potentially isn't an old fish if they're there but you can't see them moving so it's potluck basically but let's see how this goes now so because we've changed fly we're not going to go straight and cast 30 yards out again we're starting the process all over again there could be fish that are five foot out six foot out something like that and while while they didn't want to come to a cat bug they may respond more positively to a, a coral egg there you go what they say and just like that so we weren't fishing far out i would say probably 10 12 yards from where i am right now new fly to chuck it out just to see and it resulted in a fish almost immediately and we won't keep them out of the water for long there you go we'll get him straight back there he goes so that's two fish in the space of about 10 minutes on the bung one on each fly I'm going to chuck this coral egg back over there just to see if the um, the fish that are there are willing to take it a bit more now as a general rule if I catch another one on this fly this fly is coming off I'm just trying to prove a point that basically which flies work and how to get them to work basically so if you've bought this box already or if you're interested in buying this box I will leave a link um, in the description below but if you've bought this box already hopefully you're getting some value about how to fish these flies at your local water so we'll try chuck one a bit further down this time and we'll just see there you go just like that look first cast after the last fish results in another fish straight away oh there you go and there's the fish look we'll get him straight back and there he goes okay so i think i've proven a point there now in terms of the bung working in conditions like this we've got bright sun a little bit of wind but flat calm in this corner here it's quite cold so there isn't a hatch going on yet and all i'm doing is fishing our bung in this corner about two to three foot changing it with changing flies now what i will do is i'm going to switch off the bung now because i know it works i don't need to keep hammering these fish with that method i'm going to switch across to something else if these are fresh fish they should come to a damsel if they're fresh fish we'll try that out now just to see if it doesn't work then we'll switch to the cormorants okay so let's have a little break and what just happened there now we've covered the first 40 minutes on the first peg we're going to move now we set up with the three rods and the bung was working instantly so one fish to the cat bug within five minutes and then two fish on the eggs straight away then we moved across to the damsel and the apps nothing and then we moved across to the cormorants again nothing so what i think is happening at the moment is because we've got such a bright sun and we've got a relatively flat calm we need to slow everything down as much as we can so the more disturbance we make on the water the more our flies are moving the more it's likely to spook the fish if it's warming up quite nicely now if it carries on i think what i'll probably do is put the lure rod away and switch to nymphs simple answer because we can fish the nymphs as static as we need to on a straight line approach and when we get over to the next few pegs where there's deeper water there might be a chance that the fish will switch on to the nymphs so that's the first peg done with three fish in on the egg fly and the cat bug let's see how we can get on on the next peg fishing far out we're just going to work in front of us quickly there you go ooh missed him 
Okay, so that's two casts, two takes, that deep. So we know that they're down there. That bung is currently at about five and a half feet. So to come around that then, what we need to do is think about a way of presenting another method at and around that depth. The die three, oh there we go, straight away. Oh, you bugger. Okay, they're playing with this, which is good. Let's try something else on them. So now I'm gonna try a different fly just to see whether we can convert those little nips and tucks into actual solid takes. We found the depth, we know where they are. Let's just mix up the flies a bit now. So I'm gonna put on the cat bug. There you go. There we go. So that just proves the point, look. We were getting nips and tucks on the ecstasy worm, but to convert those nips and tucks, we changed the fly. We didn't change the depth. We didn't change anything about on the method itself, just the fly to see if we could get a better reaction out of the fish. And that's probably the best fish of the day so far. Not massive, but we converted the, we converted the nips and tucks into a take. fish at this fishery. Come on, game straight back. And there you go, look, late on, on the olive apps from the box, and there you go, we're getting straight back. Yeah, there you go. There we go, guys. There we go. It took us a while, but we sussed it out. Oh, look, it's another one of the stocky. I'll get him straight back. There he goes. There you go. Last fish of the day. Round off the day, so another one of the fish in here in this and we'll get this fish back now. Well, I said it was going to be tough, and would you believe it? It was. Obviously, the conditions were up against us today. We had flat calm, we had bright sun all day, and it actually got quite warm, but sadly, it didn't result in a hatch at all that we could have exploited. Now, the point of today was really to take this box and show how it works in action. I've done a video on this already, which you can find here, which talks about the box itself and what I would recommend you do. But today, for the people who'd bought this box, I wanted you to see how I would approach it in a real life scenario at a fishery that I haven't really been to that much. And if you guys are interested in buying this box and you haven't bought, bought it yet, I will leave a link in the description somewhere for you to take a look. Um, in terms of the flies in the box today, because it was a bung day, 
Um, every single bung fly worked in here. We had fish on the catberg, on the ecstasy worm, and on the egg. We also got fish on the olive apps from the box. Sadly, most of the other stuff didn't work, not because I don't think this is the right flies. I just think that today was one of those days where if you just sat there on the bung, you could have had a pile of fish. So if we'd have persisted with those flies under the bung, we'd have worked. Um, but obviously I wanted to try and zone in on those fish a bit better for a practice competition we got tomorrow. I wanted to see if I could get anything going around that four to six foot uh, water column. Sadly it didn't happen, so I think I know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. But I wanted to say a big thank you to you for watching this video. And if you found it at all helpful, please give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. My name is Reese, and I will see you next week.